Ah! Whoa! No, less friendly. Ah! <laughs> I hope that didn't scare anybody do who a, started the podcast. Do a monkey noise. <laughs> so this is a good podcast. Gus and Eddie podcast. We're here. Gus hit a million subscribers. Um, I, every time I want to do a celebration thing, I want to sing like a melody thing, but then we'll get demonetized. You could do our theme song. Da, 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 That's still not the theme song, dude. Da, 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 da. That's not it. We sing it all the time. That's it. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> we can't get demonetized. That's, that's probably the only thing that's going to be safe is trying to do the Seinfeld theme song. Because yeah. <laughs> you can't match the notes. You just... Yeah, they can't fucking find that. I, can you imagine if they did claim this video? <laughs> yeah, for just me going... <laughs> NBC's like, we know. One thing I was going to mention to you that I said I would say for the podcast is... Um, I hate this is and I recognize it every time I do it is when I haven't uploaded like close to a month and then there's one day where like a couple people have issues with their uploads mm -hmm. and for a second my brain will go like good if I had a, <laughs> if I had uploaded it wouldn't have worked and yeah. I'm like shut the fuck up where I'm like it's a good thing I procrastinated this entire month because <laughs> one day could have gone wrong you're a, you're ahead of the game guy That's you're thinking it. it you're doing it up the boys really are back in town, though. We're feeling good today, fellas. We're feeling real fine. Yeah, I hit the table when you're saying that's that. That's just fine. Well, again, I was just about to go sing the song that refers to the boys being back in town, but we it can't. can't. We'll just do, we'll do a cover of it, okay? Yeah. The boys, the boys they really the do boys are they be, be back, back in, in town. town sometimes. I love that song. It's in the Kia C it's flat. A jam. Whenever uh, I mean, you heard it during the LA road trip. Whenever, whenever the boys from high school are back in town and we're leaving town on a road trip, we blast that song, the first one, because it's just such a fun song. It was kind of all, always sunny, basically. You got to do it. I love those road trip and songs. It's like '80s rock for real, though. You got to yeah. blast them. Do you remember as a meme during our move out here? We must have played "Life Is a Highway" by <laughs> Rascal Flatts. Like, per, what do you what do you think? Maybe like. At least 20 times. At least, I was going to say at least 30 times. Okay, yeah, it was probably more like more than 30. So how long is that song? <laughs> Let's do the math oh on it. Oh, my God. Life is a <gasps> highway. I'm going to guess I'm gonna guess three minutes and 50 seconds. I'm guessing 320, bitch. It doesn't waste time. Sorry for calling you a bitch back then. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Life's a highway, baby. <laughs> Whoa, 426. God damn. So we definitely did it Thir I would 30 say 30 times. times. We definitely listened 30 times for the meme, but then also we kind of enjoyed it. How do we do this? And let's make it be in seconds, okay? So in 426, there is 60 times 4, so 6 times 4. So, so it's 240 uh, seconds. So let's go... Uh, oh, plus 30 more. So 270 seconds. So 270 times 30. So that gives us 8,100. And if we divide that by 60, how many minutes? That's 135 minutes of life oh as a my highway. God. <laughs> Here's the thing. In our defense, the road trip was very long. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see what the length of the Santa Claus 2 was. <laughs> 135 here so let me see an hour and 45 so we had <laughs> one hour or one and one thirds worth of santa claus 2 of life as a highway i, I want to see somebody animate that math <laughs> <laughs> so piece that together was santa claus 3 the one during the christmas podcast that i accidentally zeroed in on the budget like exactly oh yeah dude, wasn't it, it was like ridiculous. 12 million yeah they like skimped and it's an hour and 38 i guess that's not too much can you imagine um, if i like somehow looked just that up before and like lied to you about yeah. knowing it. Where <laughs> we were just going into the Christmas one. I was like, I need to know the Santa Claus three budget before yeah. going into this podcast. Just, I'm just off the top of my head. <laughs> Everyone was be so impressed. <laughs> Stupidest flex ever. <laughs> uh, yeah. $12 million budget for the Santa Claus three, which is like, come on. You made enough off the other ones to that's it's weird. I don't, we can't get off on the Santa Claus three. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be talking for hours. You know me, you know me. You said you had a story about Subway that you wanted to say for the podcast. Okay, yeah. We have evolved as people, Eddie. I believe we've grown. We've evolved from complaining about Postmates uh, every podcast. Right. Now we just do it some of the podcasts. We're, uh, yeah, we're in the acceptance period. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we were rationalizing. I went to Subway today. And I don't know what was going on. There was this there was this girl that was making my sandwiches. I go in there pretty often, and she's made mine before. I was the only person in line, and she was working by herself. And every step of the way, she got it wrong. 
Like, like you tell them step by step. I'll give you a little quick rundown here. I said I would like a six inch wheat. She gives me a six inch wheat and immediately started putting salami on there. And without I, asking anything? Yeah, without asking anything. So I said like She's uh, like, Well you gotta have salami. <laughs> you gotta do it, come on. <laughs> <laughs> so like right away I just went like ooh. I was like, oh, hold on. I didn't say any meat. I was going to get Black Forest ham. And she gives me a little bit of like a oh, like a little what? eye roll. <laughs> so I already was like, dude, you went out the gate strong with a salome. You're going to go with fucking ham instead of salami? <laughs> I knew I clocked you as a Black Forest bitch <laughs> when you walked in. <laughs> this guy likes ham, hey! everybody. No one else was in the restaurant. Yeah, so she still did it. <laughs> she did it. That's company policy. <laughs> so she does, and then she puts the ham on there. And then she goes, do you want it toasted? And I said, yeah, I want cheese on that, though. Could I get pepper jack cheese? So she puts it on there and then slides it to the veggie thing and says, what veggies do you want? And I said, well, I, I wanted it toasted, I said. She goes, oh, okay. She puts it in the oven, toasts it. She takes it out, knocks one of the cheeses off. So then she just puts a fresh cheese on there. So there's one toasted one and one fresh piece of cheese. What the fuck? And then she goes there. And then what I always do... I hate when the subway employees get cocky. You ever go into a subway and like you start saying like, I want like maybe spinach and lettuce and they go, say them all, say them all. I have not had that. Maybe I eat too much subway. <laughs> that happens to me probably 25% of the time. You eat a lot more subway than I do just because I haven't gotten it pretty I, recently. I but. probably do it four to five times a week. I have subway. Okay. Yeah. So like, <laughs> don't, just don't fuck with me on this one. I, <laughs> I don't ask a lot. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Way out of your league. So I'm just like, uh, I always tell them two ingredients at once. You know, that's good. I yeah, go, that's fine. Cause it's not wasting their time. They can do it fast enough and then they can like log it. And, yeah. Yeah. It's easy. So I go, uh, can I get spinach and lettuce? And she puts lettuce on and it goes, what else? And I was like, uh, spinach, please. Oh, okay. So she puts it on. And then I said, cucumbers. Could I have cucumbers? I just did the one. She goes, okay. And she puts tomatoes on there. What? It's like, what is going on in your head right now? Yeah. There's just some wires crossed for everything that you've been telling her. Yeah. So now I have to seem like an asshole because now I've told her, whoa, oh, hold on. Like a few times. Yeah. So I was like, oh, hold on. I said, cucumbers, not tomatoes. She goes, oh. <laughs> not even what? sorry so she takes the tomatoes off puts cucumbers on and then i said can i get uh jalapenos and green peppers and she just puts jalapenos on and i was like dude and green peppers and then she puts those on and there are like three stems of the jalapenos i'm gonna do a fucking expose video on subway jalapenos every sandwich i don't think i've ever had a sandwich that didn't have a big fat jalapeno stem in what there What the fuck? so there's like three of them in there so i said like could i could i trouble you to pick a couple of those stems off and she goes what just a, a couple of the stems in there. If you could just kind of pick them off. He goes, what stems? I said, the jalapeno peppers, like they've got stems on there. These? Yeah, could you pick those off? Okay. So she takes them off. And then I was like, uh, okay, and then I'll have uh, some ranch. Puts the ranch on. And then I'll have some spicy brown mustard. She grabs the honey mustard. And I was like, what? And I was like, no, no, no. Spicy brown. She puts it down, grabs the yellow mustard. Dude. It's literally labeled. It says spicy brown mustard. Yeah. So I was like, wait, not that one. <laughs> At this point, I was like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. So she grabs the spicy brown, puts it on, brings me to the checkout. And she's like, is this for here to go? And I'm like, it's to go. I said, I don't want it in a bag, though, please. So could you not, like, bag it? And then she goes, beep, beep, beep. Two seconds later, she throws it into a bag. And, and then, I was, wait, does Subway like the rest of the things here where bags actually cost extra money for it? Or no, is that, they just okay. they just did it. Because grocery I, stores here do that. So they yeah. do, yes. So I was just like, no bag, please. And it was seconds later, and she just puts it in a bag. So genuinely, Eddie, that's like 10 things. Yeah. That's I, insane. I didn't tip her, but that's just because you don't tip at Subway. Yeah, you don't. It but would still, be. I didn't tip her even harder that time. <laughs> no, that's crazy. Do you think you, like, you left and she was like, what a fucking that's asshole. That's the worst. But yeah, she's just like, oh my God, this fucking guy. But it, yeah. was, it, was, it was so bizarre because it was like, here's one instruction. Cucumbers, tomatoes. You know? I, I yeah. Just, I don't know. The weird thing is like, we know because we worked in food service. If I was in that situation, it's like, oh, here's a thing where I'm kind of fucking up. But I could really diffuse this by being friendly. And if I were, if I was just like, I'm, listen, I'm sorry, like I got wires crossed today. Sorry, and it's like mm -hmm. that diffuses the situation, except for like real assholes. Exactly. It's like you could just say like sorry yeah. instead of. <laughs> I will go back in later today and fight her though. We'll beat the shit out of her. I'll do it. I'll tell her I'm a marine. I don't think that's gonna work. Okay. <laughs> I don't look like a marine. I don't think either of us look like Marines. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just wheel you in with your pose like that. <laughs> just like, yeah, I, the I, recruiters, I, they just walk in and he just goes, 
<laughs> like, <laughs> I, I instantly outrank him by doing this. <laughs> That's like different levels of the military. Instead of the like added cross things, you just Level. higher up. <laughs> <laughs> the top guy is just like this. <laughs> Do you think that you could last in the military at all? No. I would be dead day one, dude. I couldn't, dude. I could, like, just go through basic training. It's just, and it's not in a, I hate when you ever heard people do, like, in the macho way. Like, I could, just couldn't let somebody tell me what to do. Yeah. It's like, I physically I, and emotionally could not handle somebody screaming in my face so much. I, yeah, I couldn't do it. I'm and too I'm, delicate of a flower. <laughs> I'm a baby-ass boy, you know? <laughs> yeah, physically, I know that I would fail primarily because of that. But also, like, I have built up 23 years of just stubborn-headedness. Like, yeah. I don't want someone to be like, you fucking loser, pick up that toothbrush. I didn't say pick it up. I'd be like... Dude, you just told me to pick it up. Yeah, <laughs> I'd be such a dick. Yeah, dude, I would like get punished so much for it too. That's why I love YouTube so much. Is I was thinking like as I got into the workforce, I was like, do I have to have a boss here because like I'm too much of an asshole to have a boss all the time? Yeah, that was what was nice about uh, when I worked concessions is that Tony and I were managers and my supervisor was like a friend. So yeah. it was like anybody, and then like the family restaurant, and, like Rocco, the owner, like. He, we were tight. So it's like nobody was mean to me. Yeah. And I just got to do whatever I wanted. Uh -huh. Then when I worked at AMC, they were like, you can't do this. Or like, please do this. And I was yeah. like, I, I'm not made for this type of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I used to work like, uh, well, clearly yours was a far more official concession stand. Like it was a business, you know? Yeah. But I used to work all the time. Like growing up, I'd volunteer at uh, baseball games and stuff to just run the concession stand. Again, right. my dad's the head coach. So it's just, you know, it's a little rinky-dink concession stand. You're grilling burgers and brats in the back, and then there's maybe popcorn and candy bars and stuff. And it always, it, it never ceased to amaze me how many people, it was always middle-aged women, <laughs> mm. who would come up and expect, like, customer service as if it were, like, a fucking restaurant. Yeah, dude. They'd come back with, like, a half-eaten brat and be like... Um, I noticed there's a little bit of charcoal on this. It's like, bitch, a 12-year-old grilled this. Yeah, what did you dude. think? You bought a $1 brat. I can't, like, stress enough how much at concession stands middle-aged people think that it's a restaurant. I just, like, like you said, though, people would come back. I don't think this is cooked enough. I, like, I think that, like, one thing is we had, um, like, chicken tenders, yeah. but even said on the bag that they were, like, pre-cooked, so, like, they wouldn't be raw, and then you just fry them, right? Mm. Um, and because they'd be frozen, um, like you know Tyson chicken tenders. Yeah, They're and not you can tell, like it yeah. literally doesn't look pink. Yeah, all the time I would have moms come up with it broken in half, and they would go, "I'm sorry, this is not cooked." And I would go, "I'm sorry, like do you mean it's not like it's cold?" And they go, "No, it's just it's not safe to eat." And I would go, <laughs> "Man, I can show you the bag. It says pre cooked on it." And they're like. I'm just, it can't, can I get something else? Yeah. And I just we could give like away stuff to kind of deal with customer service things. So I'd just be like, "Do you want a slice of pizza?" I was just like, "Get the fuck away from me, please." Yeah. See, I was such a terrible customer service person because like, it, it, I was not raised in an environment that cultivated successful customer service because my bosses were never there for like the four years for pizza service stuff. Yeah, there were times where it was just like high school kids were running it yeah. genuinely. So like the most high school kid or trusted high school kid would open up and I wouldn't see my bosses for like four months at a time sometimes. Yeah. So it's like <laughs> I probably hurt their business a little bit and I didn't care about like the company standing, but it was just such a personal insult when people would say that dumb shit and we'd be like, Dude, what do you want me to fucking tell you? Yeah. It's cooked. Yeah. Shut up. Can I speak to your manager? And every time you just say, I am the manager, man. Yeah, <laughs> no, that, it's all kids. That's what was great is especially they thought um, even me in college, like I still, it was before I had like any facial hair that I was trying to grow or anything. So people would ask me for like a manager and I just be like, it's me. Yeah. So what's up? Um, that's kind of the end all thing because they know like I'll keep going up the chain. It's just like. You've reached the end of the chain with yeah. me. <laughs> we, your tenders. we had a lot of ridiculous people. Like some, especially there would be moms where we would be, have four people working a small concession stand. Mm -hmm. And one of the stands, the one that I worked the entire time, and I worked one of the smaller ones, but they'd always be like, can you work this one 40 minutes from where you live? And I go, no. Yeah. And then I would, so I would go to that main one. Um, I think sh I can say the place. I don't live around there anymore. Yeah. It was uh, a Rainbow Falls Water Park in, in Elk Grove. And it was nice where, like, on slow days, you wouldn't have much to do. Where, like, even the, the busy time was pretty busy, but then there were hours of just kind of standing around. And if you managed and closed, like, Tony and I would be working together. Mm -hmm. And then from, like, 6 to 8, we'd maybe have, like, 20 customers. So you just sit around and hanging out with your friend. But it sucked when you were, like, 
closing with some young teenager and you're like, I can't, hang. they're not cool. Yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, the busy times would be extremely busy because it was a full water park. And when they did uh, safety breaks, they'd blow the whistle and everyone would have to leave the pool for a little bit for them to make sure that nobody was like drowning or anything like that. I, I think they just do it for the drills for the lifeguards. Mm -hmm. And during safety breaks, you can totally go to the concession stand. So everybody in an entire water park would leave oh, the pool and no. go, I'm hungry. And sometimes, even though we were friends with the lifeguards and the managers, they'd pop in and be like, hey, safety break in one minute. Oh, my God. Give you a heads up. Cook shit. Yeah, that's the thing is for uh, some of them, I was friends with some of the managers. And even those friends sometimes wouldn't do it. And it really pissed me off because it's like, we're cool here. Yeah. But uh, sometimes they tell us like, hey, we're going to do one in 30 minutes. I would go back to the fryer. I would super stock us and we'd go through quickly. Mm -hmm. But if we didn't get a warning, we'd have a really long line. And then moms would come up and be like, I have been waiting in this line <laughs> for 30 minutes. And I'd just be like, sorry, man, but it's a, it's a long line. And then yeah. she'd just be like. Well, what I should get something for waiting. And I'm just like, I'm sorry, no. Like, I can't give you anything for free for waiting in line. No. Yeah. It's like, hey, you got into the line. Yeah. <laughs> the line was really long and you went, it's worth the wait. And then you got to the front and went, what is this? It's like, you got in line. It was literally like there'd be the eating area and then this big archway. And the line would leave the archway and start to circle around the pool. And it's like, if you got in that line. You are either about to starve to death or a fucking idiot. Yeah. I'm sorry. Like, you cannot get me to wait in a line like that and be like, this is ridiculous. I love that you know that some people got in that line knowing I'm going to wait forever. And as a result, I will get a free thing. Yeah. And that's my objective. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they and get I all the way to the front. Like, fuck you. I don't know. Yeah. Like, I would give the free stuff, like I said, to people who are maybe complaining about food. I never gave anything for free for people complaining about a wait because our weights were never unless it was like our fault. Like we had these, uh, these pizza ovens that would like, they were like conveyor belts. Mm -hmm. So there was a top row and a bottom row and every once in a while, someone would put one in the top row and there was no trays. So like, if you forgot, you put a pizza in just, you'd be working and then you just hear <laughs> and you just look and there's a pizza just fucking cheese down on the table. And it's like, fuck. So during yeah. the busy times, like everyone's running around and you're waiting on more cheese pizza. And then one just fucking slaps onto the table. It's terrible. That's awful. So then I'd give people free stuff if it was like that, but yeah. not for waiting in the line. Cause you're a fucking moron. Yeah. I remember one time there were a couple of people that I straight up told off when I worked at the pizza place. Um, one of them was legitimate. My girlfriend at the time was like working out front. We usually only had one girl out front. Sounds like a sex act. Sorry, I just thought too that like, you're like, there's one person I told off. So my girlfriend at the yeah. time, <laughs> <laughs> no, like uh, she was out front and there was a guy that was like, he, he, it was just one dude out there and he came in and it was at the end of the night. And, uh, this is probably the most macho thing I ever did, by the way. I'm just going to flex on myself. Oh, yeah, dude. So, like, she comes back in, and it was just me and her working. And uh, and and she's just like, ugh. And I was like, what's up? And she goes, he was really being, like, very uncomfortably, aggressively flirting with me. And I was like, really? Oh, that shit, that's, that sucks. Like, let me know if he does it again, okay? And then, like, she goes out, takes his order or whatever, and I was kind of, like, looking in stuff. And I didn't see it, but she came back, and she's like, he was, like, touching my arm, and I said, please stop. And he's just like, oh, sweetheart, you need to settle down. Oh, God. So I was like, what the fuck? So I literally, I went out there, and I told the guy to his face, I said, like, hey, you need to get the fuck out of here right now, you fucking pig. And he's Hell like, yeah, excuse dude. me? That was so stupid. He could have kicked my ass. I was just a dumb kid. I was just like, yeah, seriously, like, get the fuck out of here right now. You're going to be in big trouble. And he's like, okay, asshole. That's how you get a pizza pan to the face, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> Guess what happened afterwards? What? She went... Well, we didn't kiss. Oh. We weren't dating yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> she just went, is he gone? Yeah, that was it. Um, there was no payoff. One thing you just reminded me too. Well, one, that props to you, dude. Bing. And props to her for dealing with it. Yeah. The Gus and Eddie podcast is an ally to women. I just want to get in the same frame. So. We haven't. Shit, we haven't had a woman guest on yet. <laughs> oh, wait. Ah, ah. What are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> Um, we do, we do. We talked about it before. We definitely have people that we want to get on. But um, one thing I was going to say about the uh, the concession stand too. My last summer working there, this is while we knew each other. I think I told, I must have told you this at this time. Um, sorry, I'm sick, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, we had these two twins, mm -hmm. not me and Tony, obviously. <laughs> okay, thanks for clarifying. <laughs> they were. I was. Um, 
I must have been, there was not last summer that I worked it, so two summers ago, so I had to be 20. Um, I had been managing for two years, and they hired these two twins who went to my old high school, and they were identical twins, and apparently they were like kind of like rougher kids, um, and they... <laughs> They came to work and like I trained one of them and it was just like they just did dumb shit all the time. It would just be like you'd you'd see them randomly just like some like accidentally spilling cheese and trying to pick it up with their hands and shit. (laughs) Like you'd be like, what are you doing? So they were like kind of sometimes causing issues where they'd like ask too much if they could close or one rule we had where it was like we barely got any tips because we weren't allowed, but we could get the ones off the card machine. Mm -hmm. So there'd be a couple of tips. If you closed, you got the tips. So if you worked from fucking 11 to 4 instead of 10.30 to 8 p.m., you wouldn't get a tip, yeah. you know? So then they would, like, walk up to the counter to me on their, like, second shift and be like, can I get my tips? And it's like, do you – you don't know how it works around here, yeah. do you? Um, so I don't know if you remember this at all, but one day I come in to open, and the big pizza oven I mentioned is dented to shit on the side. Oh. This thing has been there for probably 10 years. Yeah. And I was like, what the fuck? I closed yesterday. And I was like, and I definitely locked the doors. Like, what the fuck happened? Mm-hmm. Um, but I I believe it was like I closed, um, but one of those twins took the keys back to the restaurant. Oh. Because like I, like I had to go do something with Tony, um, and I, he wasn't closing with me that day. So it was like I closed with one of the twins and he took the keys back to the restaurant. So I open immediately call uh, my boss. And then uh, apparently somebody heard through like one of the employees that was going to high school with them heard that they went to Rainbow Falls because one of their like one of them left their bag in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. So they went back at night. And it's like, okay, so pieces together. Yeah. This thing's dented to shit for some reason. Oh, I forgot a very important detail. One of the twins had just gotten fired. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. Sorry. So it's like dented to shit. And then they, w- one of them just kept working for us for the summer. And it's just like, what the? F- like, yeah, that's fucked they, up. It's because they couldn't prove it. So you can't like fire them for it. But they, I guess, walked in and it's like, how the fuck do you dent a giant like industrial pizza oven? Yeah. It's like metal. So they had to have grabbed other metal utensils and like hit it with it. And it's like, because you were fired? Or? I hate these kind of people so much. Yeah. I hate the people that are pieces of shit that will never be told that they're pieces of shit for these reasons and then get away with it. And now yeah. probably they're sitting around. We're talking about it now and being like, fuck these guys. They're probably being like, dude, bro, this time when I was in high school. Yeah. yeah. One thing, too, is <laughs> the one that got fired, I remember, I don't. I almost said his name. It was dumb. Um is like this was a stupid fucking rule for the place is they didn't want you to like sit on the counters but mm-hmm. there were no chairs so like if you're working 10:30 to 8 you're literally standing all day yeah so like i don't care if they find out they like me still i would just grab one of the chairs from the back room and like tony and i and we would just like sit down for hours and it's like if our supervisor came in like she was our friend it didn't matter it's mm-hmm. like hey i'm sitting yeah um one of these kids straight up like in the middle of a work day no gloves uh, just sat on the ground like like uh, crisscross, just sitting on the ground with his hands on the floor. Oh, I and I, yeah, and I was like, hey, you need to go to the bathroom and wash your hands and not sit on the gross kitchen floor. And he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> it, um, aren't you so glad that you're just not unaware? Yeah. Like, it's we don't even think about it. But also there's a simplicity to being unaware. You don't have to get annoyed by people doing stuff that has nothing to do with you. But that's what happens to me all the time. That's true. I don't know what I would prefer more. Because, again, we sound like such r slash I am very smart. No, it's not even a, yeah, it's not even a smart thing. I think, like, it's to a fault. I'm too concerned about, like, my presence socially. But some people are just like, nah. Yeah. Whatever. I hate it. And I'll like I'll find one dumb thing that somebody does and I'll key in and I'll be like, oh, I got to tell Eddie about this later. And, yeah. And it could be something dumb like like if I took a sip for all you video listeners, this is a little treat. Fuck you audio listeners, you won't get to see the sight gag. You know that when we say that we don't actually mean that. We don't mean it. We love you. <laughs> we love you guys. Like there could be someone that's over here and they're taking a sip and they go like this. 
I, I really fucking hated what you just did. I've never <laughs> seen that before, but I really hate that. So for you audio listeners, I took a sip of the glass and then real subtly I licked, like, licked up the little drop off the tip. I would see that and I could have a perfectly fine evening with somebody. Like they could be one of my best buddies, but the whole time I'm thinking like, you fucking rim liquor. <laughs> <laughs> like I can't get it out of my head. But sometimes that's justified though. Like yeah. I, eating boogers is a hill I will die on. Yeah, you know? that's what it's like. That's, Stupid. It sounds like you're in in defense of it. Yeah, no. <laughs> Fuck eating boogers. If you eat your boogers, I've had to have uncomfortable talks with two of my adult friends. Be like, dog. <laughs> I've never encountered a friend that did that. It's just like, come on. And one of the guys is just like, oh, sorry. It was like, a, it's just a nervous tick. It's a nervous tick. Uh, That's like, like tapping your foot. There are like three steps to be like insert, excerpt, insert, swallow. Uh, I can't. Yeah, I can't even. It's I too don't like to gross. do it. You know what I do like doing though is man. man! It's mail. It's mail. I can't even do the Blues Clues thing. It's time mail. <laughs> <laughs> I think even the notes there can oh, do shit. it. Time mail. So, again, we got the P.O. box. Send us your stuff. Address it to Gus and Eddie. Otherwise, I'm going to open it because it's my personal P.O. box. Um, yeah, P.O. box link in the description. Thanks for sending us your stuff. The packages are starting to come in. So, get them while they're hot, says we. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's my favorite part of Blues Clues? Every episode when Steve goes, blue, I love that part. Yeah, it's just half the time that's kind of the core plot point of the episode. Yeah, too. it's where, and you, you see while he does it, he turns that little notepad that he has, and it's a picture of him having sex with blue. And it's like, that's, I don't think you should put this in a kid's show. How old is blue? <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do that. How old is blue? It's illegal either way. If blue oh. is 18, that doesn't work still. It's his dog. How old is Blue from Blue's Clues? I think Blue's like two years old. You made it weirder. It was already a dog. Hey, man, I'm just defending you. <laughs> Blue is 35 years old. <laughs> <laughs> um, description. It doesn't say. He's the titular protagonist of Blue's Clues. Um, according to the legend, oh, according to the legend of the blue puppy, one of their what? hit episodes, blue is very different from other puppies. Okay, so it doesn't tell what age, but blue is a puppy. <laughs> blue, blue is like eighty-five. <laughs> yeah. He's very different from other puppies. He just won't die. <laughs> <laughs> he's calling out for his meds the whole time. He used to be able to speak, but he's just going. <laughs> <laughs> Steve's just like fucking. If blue could just go already, I'm so tired of this shit. Your friends have died. Why can't you too? That's what Steve says. <laughs> I fucking loved Blue's Clues when I was little, man. Yeah, I didn't ever watch it. So <laughs> I had a computer game for it that was really fun where Blue is throwing a carnival and there's little carnival games. And then also you'd do other things at the carnival. <laughs> <laughs> can't fucking open it. Just ripped the box. Oliver sent us this thing. I, again, we blacked out all your addresses. We're not doxing you. He used, like, industrial tape on here. It's a bear! It's a bear! Dude, it's a Build-A-Bear. What is it? Does it have a name or anything? Let's check it out. Um, they didn't name it. Name slash nom. Is it a blank Build-A-Bear? Is there drugs in this? I don't like... It's a certificate. Oh, okay. Date of birth. January 27th, 2019. <laughs> okay. This is so cute. Oh, full name. It's Bus Jackson. Oh, nice. Bus Jackson the bear. He's really soft, actually. Like, feel this fucking bear. Dude, this is top 10 bears I ever groped, honestly. <laughs> Do you think you could kill this bear? If you I think it? I could. No, actually. Whoa, they got a thing on the hand. Let's hit it. <gasps> oh, it's shit. It's my song. It's the ukulele. How much of a song can you record into here? Is it, is it still? Okay, really, it really devolved there a little bit, but. Oh, I love it. So in that song, I grabbed the paper lamp. <laughs> so he didn't cut it off like before the lamp grab because uh. there's like probably 10 seconds of me grabbing and then sometimes I hide my face. Mm. So thanks for including that. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's a good one. Thank you, Oliver and Nia or Naya. I'm sorry how to pr pronounce it. but Thanks, guys. We're keeping Bus here. He's going to be our, our boy for the episode. Well, it's going to get in your camera. Yeah. Well, we'll keep him with love. On the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, since I'm sick, I've been like going away from the mic to sniffle a little bit. But I, sometimes I've been going into your shot, which means it's completely unavoidable to have me doing that. Oh, that's okay. I'm real good at this shit. We should probably get a new mic filter, pop filters anyway. Yeah.
This is from our boy Kevin. LMAO Kevin, like from my restaurant video. Dude. Yeah, or just like any regular Kevin. No. <laughs> <laughs> You guys gotta stop using packing tape. <laughs> yeah, too it's hard. too much. Um, okay. Ooh, bacon. Whoa. What the fuck is this bacon luxurious chocolate? Okay. See, there was a time where like putting bacon in things was like, oh my god, can you believe it? But it's like honestly, that might be a little bit good. Look, it's Kermit the Frog here. Deborah. <laughs> <laughs> do you think, um, or do you remember the time where the internet was like there were two memes and it was like. Ron Swanson and bacon and it's like you just cringe thinking about it. Yeah, there was no substance where it's just like America freedom bacon Ron yeah. Swanson. Wait, is this the running bit? Hold is on. Is it? Yes it is. Yay, Tony. Tony, you're on the podcast. Hang up if you don't want to be on it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> do, you think, do you think Tony will ever talk on the podcast? I don't think so. Look, we have a printout. Gus and Eddie versus the fourth graders. <laughs> Is Jimmy Neutron in there? <laughs> Are you? So you got a decapitated Jimmy Neutron <laughs> and me running at Eddie with a knife in a gym full of children. <laughs> That's this, great. I'm so glad that this has been the biggest meme to come out of the podcast. Yeah. Ka-chow. Ka-chow. Nothing I happened. I forgot to upload the audio from last week, so I had to go do that. Let me text Tony and let him know. Read, Thank you, Tony. Read the note, but proofread it a little bit first. Okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> but there's a lot of slurs on this. Actually, we could just, I guess, censor it if it's bad. Just read it out loud. I sent a package to be opened on the podcast a few weeks ago, but I didn't know they had to label the package Gus and Eddie, so I decided <laughs> to send another package. Thank oh, you, shit. Kevin. Sorry about that. Was uh, there a different package then? That I don't remember. Whatever, Kevin, whatever you sent, I guarantee it was funny because this one is too. And I, I believe you're a two for two guy. Hell yeah, Kevin. Do you want to try this bacon chocolate? Yes. Bacon luscious. The thing is, what could the quality of the bacon be like if it's packaged in chocolate? It looks like it's a high quality product. Yeah. Unlike that snooky pickle chocolate shit that oh, we had. Oh, God, yeah. This could be good. Of all the weird treats, this could be actually a good one. Yeah, I was hoping with that pickle chocolate that it would have been like a pickle filling at least. But remember, it was just like little bits. I'm Each gonna... square says like chew. Wow. Oh, no, I don't want to. Well. All right. Hey, guys. How's it going? I don't detect any bacon no, in this at all. No, it just tastes like chocolate. Like, I taste some salt, but that's it. This is like really salty chocolate. Okay, Kevin. Like the fucking Tim and Eric's good. <laughs> yeah. Tastes like a really watery ketchup sauce. <laughs> That's a good one. What? Didn't he add with like with way too much mustard? <laughs> yeah. Let's get some of these big ones out of the way. I'm a fucking idiot. I should have done all those ones. You're not an idiot, dude. Thank you. All right, this one's marked fragile. <laughs> it's really ironic. It's almost as if whenever you put fragile on it, the post office makes extra care to just beat the shit out of yep. it. Because that's been the case with all the fragile mark packages so far. You should make a sketch about that, dude, about the post office fucking up boxes. Nah, man. It was already an Ace Ventura. <laughs> I would never do that. Here's a really colorful thing. Are these fucking eggs? Wait. <laughs> these are like eggs. What the hell? Are these, is it for Easter? Could be. Good did thing we, we get, opened this one. <laughs> yeah, did we get sent Easter eggs? Those have to be eggs. These are like eggs. There's no note. How many fucking eggs did you send us? Is there shit in the eggs? Here, you want to start unsaran wrapping that? Not really, though. <laughs> what do we do with this? <laughs> There's no note. Do we want to open a package of eggs? Some of it's broken, and I want to see if they're... Oh, I know exactly what these fucking things are. What? My nephews brought these out a few years ago. There's glitter and shit in those eggs. Are you sure? Yeah, dude. Look, Should you can break see one some. Of them? Yeah, let's do it. There's some glitter down here. All right, I'm going to break this. All right. Wait, it's not working. Wait. Is this hard boiled? I'm going to go in from the top here. Dude, don't. Okay. <laughs> I feel like Scully from the X-Files right now. Yeah, see? There's shit in them. Should I just punch into it? I guess, yeah. Keep it off oh, the wait, table. I was. Yeah. I'm so, this is so. <laughs> I'm so nervous about this. You son of a bitch. I bet you thought that we were going to get shit all over our apartment. But joke's on you, buddy. <laughs> that, this is actually kind of great because think about throwing them and them just like hitting something and poof. I wish that I had an office that I could just go throw these at and I could just be like, hey, Daniel, clean this up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry for being. Um, 
really like unsure about it, but I thought you sent us a bunch of hard boiled eggs and I was really <laughs> nervous about it. Yeah. We didn't want to commit before just gobbling them. It up. looks like a family made way too many eggs for Easter and they were like, we could just send them to Gus and Eddie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who are those nice boys you're always watching? <laughs> you know, what I love is, uh, my, my family still does the Easter eggs. Yeah. Um, and I just starting with high school, just started making the most fucked up eggs. And it's great. Cause like, you can write on them with crayon and nobody can tell in like a white crayon. Uh-huh. And then you have to put it like in the dye. And then I'll be like, hey, mom, could you take mine out of the blue? And she'd take <laughs> it out. just something fucking awful on it. Dude, fuck it. We're opening all the big boxes. We got two more. After Hell yeah. Mail! Mail! Ah, why did I get a dull key to open these and not a knife? Huh, that's not a knife. Pretty much like crocodile dung bees. Or maybe something different even. It's a game called Flush and Frenzy. <laughs> <laughs> poop, there it is. <laughs> what the hell? What do you do? Plunge the poop, plunge or push the plunger till the poop pops up. Oh, and you lose if the poop comes up? Do we can wanna, make a drinking game out of this. Do you want to open that bad boy up? Yeah, like think if we could put it in, you know how we said we wanted to combine like a board game with a video game championship? Yeah. This could definitely be part of it. That's a good idea. Because it's funny too. Dude, there's a lot of good shit in here. There's uh, diet cat food. <laughs> I didn't know Thank why. You. Why does there need to be diet? Do you have your keys? I didn't. I don't have money. I have pocket. the one key, oh, okay. <laughs> which is just gonna limp us through this episode. Hey, nobody, look at this key and copy it, okay? That is the PO box key. Can you do that? Uh, I don't know, actually. Fuck friction. What is this? Him in the toilet. Oh, is this cologne? <laughs> it's called fuck friction. <laughs> it is a cologne. We gotta smell this bad boy. Dude, this is a smorgasbord, as my people would say. Yeah. My so, Scandinavians. again, if you're an audio listener, this is um, what I'm seeing right now is I'm sure there's a toilet in here, but there's literally like a turd with a face and hands and a plunger. Let's see what fuck friction smells like. Good. Surprisingly uh, professional packaging for a cologne that is literally called fuck friction. Yeah. I got to actually go blow my nose really quick, so if you could... If, so if you could just take care of the poop. <laughs> if you find any knives on the way back, bring that bad boy back. Oh, my God. Oh, fuck is spelled like F-C-U-K. So fuck, fuck. Maybe it's a chicken, chicken fucking poison. Let me give it a little whiff here. Let me just spritz it into the air. Oh, come on. Okay, here we go. It does not smell bad. <laughs> it smells pretty good. Fuck friction. Who would have thought? Damn, that smells good. I'm between colognes right now. You know, can't hold down a man or a man's scent. So uh, I'll, I might put some fuck friction on when I do it. Subtle butt. I should probably wait for Eddie to come back for these, but fuck him. See this dollar right here? Who sent me this thing? Uh, Grant. Thank you, Grant, dude. Don't tell Eddie about the dollar. Everybody in the comments, I swear to God, if you fucking tell Eddie about the dollar that I'm in the pocket right now, Tony, if you out me, I know where you live. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill your brother. You're done for. This is my dollar. All right. What else we got in here? We got, uh, God damn, this is an enormous amount of stuff. We got a silly nose. You guys ever see a regular nose? Uh-uh. Forget everything you know about noses. Dumbass is a good nose. What is this Paste. Dr. Brandt Microdermabrasion Age-Defying Exfoliator. Wow, that'll go really good with my fuck stick lotion. <laughs> oh, my God. There's so much shit in here. Good job, Brandt. Best package we ever got, 2K17. How to use. What is this? Oh, progress. We got some eat, pray, love stuff. Dude, we're going full Julia Roberts in this decor. Next week, what I want to do for the podcast is is fuck the fuck this squiggly 80s stuff that we got going on we're going middle-aged soccer mom mode we're going eat pray love i want i'm talking home is where the heart is i'm talking wine is uh, i cooking with wine is fun sometimes they even put it in the food <laughs> what are you talking about nothing dear nothing eddie I feel way better now I was struggling there good i don't know how to set up that toilet dude there's so much shit in here micro abrasion derma trick stuff this should. This is like too much setup. We should set it up and play it for the next. We'll episode. We'll play it on the next episode, Grant. Thank you. Thank you, Grant. Did you smell this? Uh, yeah, it actually smells pretty good. Okay, this is cool packaging. Yeah, it, I like it. It like give it a little whiff. Take the cap off. 
fuck friction. Look at else we got. Subtle but disposable gas neutralizers. Nice, dude. <laughs> All right. This actually smells great. I might unironically use that once or twice. Yeah, same here. I don't have any cologne. What's this shit? I see a big, like, mat of somebody. Maybe they are Matt. Is this going to be Grant himself? Oh, <laughs> Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> Jeff Goldblum with a little monkey. Is that a silverback gorilla? We're getting a lot of good throw pillows. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Dude, one thing, I feel like with cologne, I'll have like a stretch of two years where I wear cologne every single day, and then like a stretch of a year where I don't buy cologne at all. Yeah. Like where it runs out. I don't have cologne right now. Did we get condoms? You Trojan condom. Okay. They're too small for my little peen, so if you want to get in there, tiger, I'll the be your wingman. Use it. You don't have to use it on me. You can just use it for other g women. Okay, okay. Or whatever. This actually, I'm not trying to like be weird but is it like a smaller size because even just feeling the ring for it, it okay big dick i'm that. not that's not what i'm saying it's i think it's just the packaging is okay. smaller okay fuck <laughs> off. i'll just be the guy that throws you under the bus <laughs> i love that key and peel sketch about those kind of people it's so telling oh the the like yeah like, tell oh, me about it <laughs> awkward <laughs> fuck those kind of people yeah he grabs his face no have an original <laughs> thought for once in your life i have an original thought yeah fuck those people it's also Tony and I were talking about this recently. The people who will just have no criticism other than, eh. Yeah. It's like, fuck you. Yeah, it's stupid. Should I read the back as you're looking at it? Yeah, because it looks badass. It says, Gus and Eddie, me and my hunky brother just wanted to send you some badass gifts. <laughs> you, wait, is this from Grant as well? I hope. Uh, use this gear to get, uh, get the chicks and make <laughs> LA your bitch. <laughs> Party hard. <laughs> and then he said, stay gold, pony boys. Grant plus Neil. Thank you, Grant and Neil. Can I just say, best package we've gotten so far. Oh, uh, dude. <laughs> Can we put this up somewhere? That fucking rules. Uh, guys, you're going on the wall. Is this them? Because it looks like it might be them. You guys look both sexually charged and intimidating. If we got that framed and then people are like, who are they? Uh, Some, just Grant and Neil. It's Grant and Neil, dumbass. <laughs> Get with it. <laughs> LA bitch. That was a good package, boys. Yeah, that was great. All right, one last one. Man! Um, if you audio listeners, it was like a cool '80s background photo with just the <laughs> coolest guys in town. I like that. Even accidentally, we sound like it's a chore to be like oh, audio listener. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I, I again, I listen to podcasts mainly audio, but it's like if you really want to see what the package looks like, just look at the time code and go to the YouTube video, and then there you go. Honestly, probably in every way, audio listening might be better for us too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but we're in so far to the meme at this point. Yeah, I but we we love you, but we gotta say fuck you. That's, I'm seeing some snacks oh my there. My God, boys, is this Whoa. snack guy? Holy shit! Is this snack guy? Stuff. Whoa! Asian snacks. Asian snacks. <laughs> I was gonna go. I was like Chinese. I don't. I'm ignorant. Asian snacks. I don't know either. I couldn't tell you. <gasps> they heard about the high chews. They, they got that fucking high chews. Maybe those ones will these. pop. You know what's really weird? Um, I was right after we talked about high chew, and then I went home. I went to my mall, like around my town. Yeah. And there was a high chew in the parking lot next to where I parked, like an empty high chew wrapper. And yeah. I was like, I have not heard of these until Gus brought them up, and now I'm seeing them everywhere. It's like the Kia Sorento rule, where if you get one, then you only see Dodge Mustangs. It is Hold from on. Snack Guy. <laughs> it is from Snack Guy. Look it, at, is it an Amazon gift? A so, gift for you. Okay. These all say, hey, Gus and Eddie, Gus please and share. Eddie. <laughs> hey, Gus and Eddie, please share. Please share. Dude, this rules, especially because if it's from Amazon, he didn't even have to, like, get them to him and everything. He just yeah. ordered them and sent them to us. Holy shit. I, thank you, Snack Guy. This means a lot. We got some boys coming over in the next week, and I did not do enough shopping. <laughs> Dude, I didn't have any sweets at all. I was thinking about that yesterday. Golden Oreos? Well, look at this. We got Prangles in here and Welch's Fruit Snacks. Dude, this fucking rules. This is banging, dude. Snack guy rules, dude. Snack guy rules. And thus concludes... Mail! Well, we do have to eat one of these Asian things. Yeah, um, Let's take it back. What's the opposite of male? Backwards. Lame! <laughs> <laughs> Let's eat uh, this mysterious child strawberry cookie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, one thing that was kind of... Um, oh, good. It's in oh, a little bit so God. we can break them apart. Um, you just went for it. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah. Hmm. This is like a pop tart. You got curry Cheetos in here too, dude. <laughs> I'm sure this is like a popular snack, and you just call them curry Cheetos. <laughs> <laughs> Let's eat this little Stay Puffed marshmallow. You're boy. choosing the smallest things we could. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, just a marshmallow. Um, shit in the middle. <laughs> got me. 
Shit. Um, one thing I was talking to, uh, you know, Zach about Zach that you went on the road trip with, not the one that we play games with a lot. Yeah. Um, one of my buddy Zach who started my channel with me, um, love him to death. He was just saying, cause we know we've heard from a lot of you guys and I, I love that this happens. It's the main like thing that we hope comes across for the podcast is that people say when they listen to the podcast, it feels like they're hanging out with the boys, which is like. The best thing I could ever hear. Absolutely. So one, to you specifically, thanks for hanging out with us. But no, uh, Zach said it's really interesting for him because he feels that, but he's also actually friends with us. Mm -hmm. So like, like in person. <laughs> so he said it's like really weird where it's almost for him like, oh, I'm just, I'm just listening into one of our conversations. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's gotta be kind of bizarre. That's weird. I feel kind of like violated, like that's a security breach. So. Yeah. Maybe Zach, you should go fuck yourself. Maybe a little bit, bit of that. Thank you. That's again. That's Eddie talking. I don't <laughs> want to be <laughs> appear to be a threat at all. One of the hardest I've ever laughed at um, a TV show, and I don't really laugh at this moment anymore. But the surprise in the Always Sunny Christmas episode, where Frank's like, "Well, what about me?" and Dennis, while closing the door, is like, well, "You can go fuck yourself and your fat fucking ass." <laughs> it just fucking killed me. Same with when he um, when he like <laughs> he kicks the the dog cage with Frank in it and shoots beer at yeah. him. It's like they don't repeat they're not as funny as like conversational jokes but the surprise of it at first just fucking kills me yeah it is a good one let's get some ready for this get ready some preguntas dude you came around do man. you know what that even means i dude? don't remember it's been weeks i don't know either actually can we hey siri that's actually it might have worked beep beep didn't work what is a pregunta I don't know. That's not Siri. That's you. Turn left on Cahuenga Boulevard. We have a we have a video podcast. People can look at you saying it. Gus and Eddie's exact address no, is... No, 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 no. Cancel. Cancels. <laughs> <laughs> is that my... No, it's my... Oh. I, I didn't mean to do that even though it was just kind of a... It's good ASMR. <laughs> Here's that was a, gross. Dude, we got some popping questions this week. I'm feeling good. Best podcast of the uh, last two weeks, Century? dare I say. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I mean, I don't know. I think this podcast is better than last week. I don't think it. we need to rank them, but I think we should rank them. It is better. If you listen to last week's episode. You dude, fucking idiot. You are <laughs> scraping the bottom of the barrel. You dude. watched it till the end? The newest podcast? Mm -hmm. Fucking loser. Get oh, my God. Here. Take it back. You remember what we would talk about... Uh, it was the, the most realizing of like er, the big realization of, of people actually listened and watched the podcast mm -hmm. is like during the first few episodes, we get to the end and we'd be like, nobody's listened by now. And then we get a bunch of tweets like I am. Yeah. I was like, whoa, people finish the podcast. Dude, the watch time retention is honestly fucking nuts. It's shocking. <laughs> it's like, I, what are you doing? We can't. I mean, it comes up every week because we say this privately too. I can't. I don't understand why this podcast is doing well. Dude, we don't get it. We're climbing the comedy charts on the Spotify comedy yeah. podcast things too. We are we have been top 100 comedy podcasts on Spotify for months now. That's fucking insane. Like, what? What? Why are you, what are you doing? <laughs> get out of get the fuck friction out of here, guy. No, but for real though, thank you for sharing this with people. Like yes. get your buddies to subscribe. The numbers are climbing up every day. The audio listens are are the highest growing things. I'm super surprised by yeah. that. What I oh sorry, go ahead. I was hoping you'd stall. I had a bad birth going. <laughs> what I was gonna say is what I love, and we've talked about this before too, that the podcast is done. And this is what okay, I'll talk did, but this one even more. Is it fully just kind of like merged everyone who watched us like knowing each other so now it's so wholesome when we go because again when we went to the live show i thought like fucking 10 people were gonna know me and then everyone listened to the podcast there it's like it's just so great that like we, we solidify when when we were back like first meeting we were like do you think ever like people will like think of us as like friends and making stuff together and it's like obviously we got there now it's yeah. just nice it is nice. Um, follow us on Twitter at Gus Buckets and at Eddie Burback. Um, do it. Please do that and ask us your questions. Thank you for tweeting at the hashtag and not in our replies. Um, we got some banging questions this week. At a David Miller three asks, why won't my dad answer my calls? Who calls anymore, dumbass? Text your dad. What's his first name? Uh, David. David. I shouldn't have to tell you why dad's not calling. <laughs> Do you have a history with David? No, I just know I know David. <laughs> if I were his dad, 
I wouldn't call. Is that some typical David bullshit going on? Anyone named David, just don't expect your dad to say anything back. <laughs> Inherently. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with being named David. <laughs> and also the dad names him that. <laughs> Uh, he named him because he didn't want to hang out with <laughs> yes. fucking David. I want this to be kind of just a passive commitment. <laughs> David. Uh, ooh, Vanna asks us at Duskalicious, I know you guys weren't huge fans of school, but what's one of your favorite projects or assignments you worked on? Um, I got to make a fake uh, a movie trailer for a movie that didn't exist for one of my film classes in high school. And Zach, who I previously mentioned two minutes ago, mm-hmm. um, we got to make it together. And I kind of got to like big dick it because she was like, here are the other projects that I've been really proud of receiving over the last few years. And they were like shitty home movies. And I was like, I fucking got this. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So I love doing that one. That's a great one. I love when teachers come in and incorporate a video element. Like, honestly, that has probably been a remembrance in multiple YouTubers minds, you know, like, Oh, I remember when I got to do this video project for school. Like, please keep doing that for all of the teachers that I know are definitely listening to this podcast. (laughs) Uh, well actually, I mean, we probably love it, but some people probably fucking hate it. Oh yeah. If it's an option. Um, I don't know if I, did I mention that project on, I think I mentioned it on the podcast before, I don't know, but just one quick thing. I I might've mentioned this before too. I'm sorry if I, I did, but two of my friends were wrestlers and their project, like, they followed us, and we put up, like, this big movie trailer. And then their project was next. And it was, like, 20 seconds of vertical and horizontal video of them about to wrestle. But they were acting, like, almost like video game characters, like, going like this. Yeah. And then it was, like, this summer. And I can't – I'll make up yeah. names. Like, <laughs> John versus Ryan. And that was the whole trailer. That, like, that was it. Yeah. Dude, you know what I love? Um our school district a number of years ago, it was right after me, of course. Um, all the kids got iPads and mm. they realized within the first few months that with the iMovie app, you can generate this kind of like, there were all these templates for these action movie trailers. Uh-huh. Where Do you know about this stuff? Like uh, Templates for it? Specifically not on iMovie. Specifically templates for the iPad stuff. And it was like everything was blocked out. So it was like the first splash of text is going to be like... <laughs> in a world you know so yeah. it was just like here's the blocking of that you're gonna put a video clip here this had one the kid had one plan video clip thing and there was epic music so it was this perfect template to be like you go shoot whatever you want put in whatever text you want everything all the sound is taken care of it's gonna look dynamic and stuff so it was so hilarious like thor my little brother was maybe in like fourth or fifth grade when they came out mm. and he was showing me like all the kids in class were making like these hilarious like trying to be serious action oh, movie I trailers. Love that so it was this really cinematic professional looking like there was one hero mm. and it's just like this kid with a reese's shirt on the playground with a stick eh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. what i love is i i told you i still wanted to make some kind of sketch having to do with this and it was um like, uh, cause I think it happened to everybody our age and mm-hmm. specifically our age, um, was like, uh, a 12 year olds action movie from 2010, like would oh, be the thing yeah. and just like airsoft guns, like fake shitty effects. Like yeah. it's a horrible, like shitty spy movie. If you want to do that together, let's we can. fucking make that. Yeah, dude. I would love to do that. Like I've wanted to do that for a long time. Cause it's just like, it feels like every guy our age, yeah, one of their friend friends had a camera and was like we're gonna shoot an action movie and everyone grabbed their airsoft guns and was like walking around trying to be all cool with it it's like a spy movie yeah. or some shit like that dude let's totally do that hell yeah dude no one else steal that shit don't steal it well just let's just do it soon all right race you <laughs> <laughs> we could get all our friends in it too that'd, that'd be, really be fun. so fun yeah okay that's a great idea dude let's totally do the that. fuck do we do with it though uh i don't know you want it on your channel I don't know. Weekly I, uploads. <laughs> yeah, but where do I fucking put it? Like, it's not... Yeah. Ah, yeah, we'll think on it. I mean, we, we're doing a joint commentary. Maybe we can fit it into the end of that. That'd be a fun one to do. Yep. Um. Uh, oh, also, my favorite assignment that I ever did in fourth grade, they do it every year. It's called the Wax Museum. It's a really cool project. Each kid takes their favorite book, and then they spend two weeks, and they take the book cover of the favorite book, and they are responsible for, like, trying to recreate the book cover. Like, you get a giant... You know those big rolls of paper in school? Yeah. You get that stuff, and then you have to, like, trace outlines and color it in, and then you have to get props together and stuff to be 
the character and you need to pose on the book. And then, so you walk around and all the classrooms are blocked off for the morning and the entire school district gets to come through and see, like walking through, it's like a museum. And all these kids have created like little dioramas where they're a character on the cover of the book. Mm -hmm. So I chose Calvin and Hobbes, something under the bed is drooling. Yeah. So like I painted the bedroom and I got a little bed in there and I got some, my grandma made me PJs to look like Calvin and I brought a dart gun and it's just me like, that rules. I love that project. That's so fucking fun. awesome. Uh, you, you know what? I also just thought we could do for our joint commentary video on my channel. What's that? What if we get a bunch of our audience to send in their action movies they made in middle school and we react to them? This guy. <laughs> <laughs> if if you're listening, I mean, actually, it probably... It's probably too late by now, right? Well, send them in anyway. Actually, yeah. Send them in send anyway. Them in. We can sit on them, look at them later. Just tweet them at us, and then I would love to like make fun of you, I guess. Yeah. Like, that's one thing. If you're cool with us just kind of clowning on you in a friendly way, then send it. Mm-hmm. If you got a cringy little action movie from middle school, I'll try and find one that I was in that we could throw in there, too. I'll do some digging. I got some old stuff I shot with Joe. I'm yeah, sure we so can find we, some we stuff. We can find some shit. That's a, ooh, that's a fun one. I'm excited for that. Um, at Tiny Prez asks, <laughs> how fast would you go into the kitchen if your mom said she had a Twix bar in there for you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty fast. <laughs> pretty. My mom did that to me, then she called me fat. <laughs> <Since it's laughs> reply. I'd say pretty fast from my personal yeah, experience. Yeah, I'd be pretty speedy, but not fast enough where I would slip my socks on the wood floor. Mm-mm, that's just rookie bullshit. Yeah, but enough for you could slide in. Yeah, was, hey, I'll take that Twix bar. <laughs> <laughs> Another mom theme one, at Hein underscore CJ asks, what's the one meal that you miss the most from mom's cooking? Um, oh, I was yeah. I was back recently. I didn't have it, but um, my mom makes really good. It's this recipe she found that's like, it's a mix of... Uh, like soy sauce and and uh, buffalo sauce for like chicken, and so it's got like that tang, but it's also like wings. And she makes grilled chicken and like puts it all over that, and it's really fucking good. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. Was, was your mom a big cooker? Cooka? Um, not as much as my dad. Uh, my mom, my dad would get off work around um like three, so he would get off kind of when I got off school. Yeah. Um, my mom's a teacher though, so she always had to stay after. Um. She still cooked more, but my dad, from like his uh, background of our family, like my great grandma being like an amazing cook and my grandma cooking, he's like more like caring about it. Mm-hmm. And my mom's more of like, it's still very caring and making the meals, but not as much of like a cook, I would say. Yeah, that's a good, that's, that's not bad. Yeah. My mom was, uh, she went hard to either side of the quality spectrum. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she had a couple dishes that she knocked out of the park. I'm talking handmade chicken noodle soup where she gets a, a fresh chicken that. and fucking then, rules uh, makes the broth lets it go off the bone slices garden vegetables makes the noodles and stuff oh that's yeah. the best thing may actually made in a pot chicken noodle soup is so fucking good it's dude ridiculous and what she would do is she she my mom makes the best homemade bread i've ever had mm. so you get a nice hot loaf of homemade bread with steaming organic butter dribbling on it and you oh my god it's fucking perfect my mom sucks making a lot of other stuff <laughs> <laughs> homemade pizza Barf City. Really? Pasta, casseroles, all that stuff. Fucking horrible. But she kills it sometimes. <laughs> there you go. Solid that's, C. That's the weird thing with, with my dad is that he would like make the regular kind of, you know, there's like the in rotation meals. Mm-hmm. But sometimes you would be like, oh shit, like dad's making something. Like he'd make his like pizza or a soup or something like that. And you're like, holy shit. I don't know. I think, I mean, it has to be kind of like an Italian thing, but I don't know if like everybody buys it. I only know of it because my great grandma. Do you know those like, really tiny almost just like tiny sphere noodles that oh, like yeah, the, they like absorb soup perfectly so I've, if, yeah i've never been a fan of that we always see that in frog eye salad i don't i've never even heard of that yeah. but <laughs> but um it's like i used to not like it as a kid but then i had my dad made it with the chicken noodle soup and there was just enough in it where it like didn't overtake everything mm-hmm. it fucking rule dude I got to take another swing at it. I don't like tiny noodles. Angel hair, those little tiny spheres or the balls, I'm not a fan of. I'm a linguine fan way more than angel oh, yeah. hair. yeah. Linguine and fettuccine, the top two boys. Tony likes angel hair more, so with sp- oh, spaghetti, I guess, like, but it's not, you know, spaghetti noodles are different. Yeah. But, like, for for home, it's, like, it's either angel hair time or last time we had angel hair, so we're having linguine. So I got to switch to the fucking yeah. the peasant <laughs> pasta <laughs> for Tony every time. Why is it that, like... 
I mean, it's the same material. Why does the shape seem to taste better for like linguine and fettuccine? For me, it's the way um, it interacts with the sauce, kind of. Okay. So like angel hair kind of holds sauce and doesn't like, I don't know about absorbing it as much, but you get more like just sauce intact, like in between the it interacting. And uh-huh. like linguine, it's just like, it's on there. It all becomes one thing. You and know what I the mean? The texture is really good. Too. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's got a, a way more solid slurp factor than yeah. than angel hair does. You also, angel hair. What a terrible fucking name for pasta. Yeah, I don't want hair, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's like calling ravioli like uh, Beelzebub's band aids. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact, they actually named the pasta linguine after the character in Ratatouille. Yeah, they knew it was coming out. That was a, <laughs> hey, 100 years from now. <laughs> you remember that meme I sent you yet last yeah. night? <laughs> you just ratted your last tattooing. <laughs> Tony, I'll send it to you. Here's here's the meme. It's so fucking stupid. I love it, though. Um, <laughs> the costume is what kills yeah, it's me. it's fucking horrible. Uh, we always had... It was kind of a meme that, like... It was pretty clear that we were joking as kids, but it really pissed my mom off because she would make stuff all the time. And, like, I'm cutting my mom short. She makes stuff all the time, and it's mostly pretty tasty, and Mm. she works her ass off at it. Um, But, like, my dad (laughs) hilariously could never cook anything. Whenever he was in charge, we'd have one of two meals as kids. We would either have just Jack's Pizza or (laughs) what he called noodles and veggies. (laughs) (laughs) And he would take ramen noodles and make, like, four packages of them and not put in the sauce because my mom's like, oh, they have MSG in them. You can't eat them, you know? Okay, yeah. So so packetless ramen with just salt and then a big bag of mixed frozen vegetables oh man cooked in the same pot so that was just the whole meal it was like we're having noodles and veggies tonight oh man <laughs> i would as a kid i would absolutely hate that because yeah. i did not like ramen until recently and then also vegetables it'd be fucking gross and it's all chewy um but what my dad did was like a regular meal that we had because we always have so much venison because we're we're deer hunters um my mom will always just cook up some venison chops steam some vegetables and then we just mash some potatoes and they were always just plain mashed potatoes but i remember one time when i was growing up um she's like peter could you just do the mashed potatoes and just he he went for the wild card hail mary he put in just a little bit of soy sauce into there into the mashed potatoes yeah fucking delicious by the way really absolutely delicious so he put in a little bit of soy sauce and that was it and they were just a little bit browner and everybody like they tasted better but all the kids were like oh my god dad you killed it with the potatoes yeah and she it was clear right away that mom was just like oh shut up he just added soy sauce i'm like dad seriously so every time going forward we're like mom Please let dad make the potatoes. And she was Dude. so annoyed. We're, we're, we're just like, you just can't do it. Like, dad's just got that touch. <laughs> That's so similar, actually, with me and my dad, but not with soy sauce. But it was, I'm not even kidding, with mashed potatoes. Really? It's like when my mom would make them. I like mashed potatoes, like, super, like, kind of creamy, soft. Yeah. And my mom likes them more where it's, like, potato bits in it. Mm-hmm. So, like, I, I genuinely, my dad would make it better where I would ask, could dad make the potatoes? So, like, yeah. it's really fucking weird that we both have that. Yeah. Dads just know, you know? They know. Dads know mashed potatoes. We all know this. Listen, I don't care how progressive you are. Daddies know mashed potatoes and mommies don't. It's just a simple fact of life. Why do you think they're called fucking papas in in, uh, Spanish? They they have it. Papas. There you have it. Try and argue that shit. Yeah. Fucking idiot. (laughs) (laughs) Um, At Paige Kaleher. Do you know this? Is this somebody we know? Paige Kaleher? I can't see that. Paige Kaleher. Um, I don't think so. I feel like I kind of know five different pages. <laughs> <laughs> um, she says, could you guys help me come up with a campaign slogan for my run for junior class president? Oh, man. I really want it to include us because I want us in it. <laughs> you can say this is uh, the officially endorsed candidate by Gus and Eddie. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But you and if if the people don't know and you want to say by the Gus and Eddie podcast, that's fine. But if you want to say Gus Johnson and Eddie Burback, we're fully endorsing you, Paige. Don't don't have some kind of racist scandal. Yeah, please. <laughs> don't do some dumb shit. We'll hear about it in the news of your school campaign. Yeah, <laughs> please no blackface Halloween costumes or some <laughs> dumb shit like that, Paige. Come on. Um, and then if you need a little slogan on stage, you say, "Hey, turn the page. Vote for Paige, but spell it like your name." And she says it twice though, so that doesn't. Take the stage, you, vote for Paige. There you go. Feel enraged, vote for Paige. There you go. There's a lot of them you can use. This is gold you're getting. Putting this down on the page in history, 
Vote for Paige. It ain't no mystery. Um, check this one out. Uh, you f- you feeling? You got it, dude. Do you want me to lay down a beat for you? you? Is your name Chage? Vote for Paige. Is that good? <laughs> 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 I'm trying, dude. I'm really trying. <laughs> it just uh, can you imagine Paige taking the stage at the assembly? Hey, is your name Chage? <laughs> <laughs> As you hear the popping in the microphone. Hey, everybody. It's good to see you. <laughs> I want you to uh, do me a favor, everybody. Raise your hand if your name is Chage. <laughs> Everybody's hand goes up. <laughs> Vote for Paige. Hey, they just lose it. Um, so, yeah, you're probably going to win. <laughs> Vote for Paige. Vote for Paige. All right. At Avery Lux asks, have you ever had a moment where you guys felt like giving up due to limitations holding you back? Example, your laptop crashing every time you try to film. Face. I mean, there are those moments of like on that video, I've never ever felt a little bit in me to be like, should I not do entertainment? Yeah. That's never happened. But there are times like when you're first starting out making videos or you get new equipment where you're just like, oh, fuck. Like the audio was not recording. And you're just like, this whole thing's fucked. I remember you had one about oh, two years Tony ago. Broke my heart. Yeah, it was a it was the uh, opening package or the what did you call it? The oh, package videos. A different one actually. Yeah, suspicious packages. Suspicious packages. Yeah, yeah, you had half the audio disappear for for it. Right, like it just stopped recording halfway through. Yeah, and I think it was like my first episode. So it was just like all the people that had the fucking heart to send this little nobody YouTuber yeah. like mail that cost them money. Just like, hey guys, I'm opening it and my my Rode microphone died or my whatever microphone oh, died. You, you told me that at the time too, but then you had a different one halfway through when I was visiting Charlie in Texas. Yeah. Um, you had that happen with, you hadn't made one in months mm-hmm. and then you were like, okay, so I'm finally getting back to it and then those people got fucked as well. It crapped out. So what I did was I did a, I did a montage to the packages and I sang over to the tune of some where that's green by Ellen DeGeneres. I don't remember. Um, <laughs> Which is going to probably get claimed now. Yeah, Ellen Green. Which, can I say something real quick? Yep. Wait, were you going to say, you had something to say you, you, about this answer. I'll, I'll mention it after. Oh, yeah. Well, the other one was, the, the one that just completely killed me was uh, when I was back in uh, college. Um, that was when, like, Curtis and uh, Will had both moved out already. My my buddies, Curtis, Tyler, Will, we all hung out and we shoot, shot stuff together in college. So Curtis and Will had already moved out and it was one of the rare weekends where they were all back home to visit. So all the boys were back home and we shot the entire video for low budget battlegrounds. And it was oh, right, right. It was right when Battlegrounds was like at the peak, and it was so funny. Like all the stuff, stuff that we shot was so funny, and it was like the last few hours before the boys had to leave. So we shot it, and it was like, "Bye, guys! I can't wait. This is such a great weekend." They left, and then for some reason, none of the stuff was on the card. And I oh triple checked God. everything. It was a library card, an old SD card though, that probably was just worn out. Yeah. And I went to Twitter, and there's this wonderful dude that that worked with me for hours like on a phone call trying to recover the files i couldn't get them back Mm -hmm. so i just had to fully reshoot the whole thing oh yeah there's one too i don't know do we even have this backed up we we came to la last march before we moved out here and we filmed another gus and eddie go to la but it was called gus and eddie go to hogwarts because we went to universal and we filmed a lot of stuff there it is a full video with guests. Yeah. What, Chris Raygun, Ethan, Crank Gameplays. Was yeah. There. Holy shit. That's when we met Ethan, too. Yeah. That's crazy. So, like, we had all that and, like, really solid bits. And just, like, the audio from Hogwarts was unusable. Yeah. Because, again, I don't want to shit on Rode. The specific only microphone that I've had is, like, the shotgun mic. It doesn't have an indicator when it's on a low battery. Yeah. It will stay green until there's a drop of juice left in that battery. Mm. And sometimes that will be hours, and it's not recording any audio. So yeah. it was just full for, like, yep. three quarters of the video. Also, I just, yeah, I want to stress because you were saying it, too, with Rode. We're using Rode mics now that they gave us, and we love it. But yeah. we're going to say if there was an issue but in the also, past, obviously. Yeah, before, like, the original Rode mic that I used never had a problem with the it. The regular shotgun mic, I think, is way better than the Pro because I've only heard issues about the Pro, kind of. Yeah, and the newest kind or whatever, I don't know what that model is, the one that Jamie's got, like, that is fucking incredible. I just know that with my specific single Rode VidMic Pro that I've had, I have had consistent issues with the audio just clicking in and out mm. um 
but I know that you had something, by the way. You start that first, and then I want to bookmark talking about another Gus and Eddie thing. Oh, oh yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. Um, so one thing is just a small bitch sesh. Don't worry, guys. It's not about you this time. Yeah. <laughs> I actually really have no complaints. The internet has been extremely wholesome in the last 48 hours. Yeah. Uh, maybe I cried a little bit. Maybe that happened. I didn't do it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. With copyright claims and songs, we're joking about it really quick. It, if you're a YouTuber and you're listening to this and you're complaining that you got claimed for singing a cover of a song or even humming a tune and you got claimed for that song, that's the law. I'm sorry. Yeah. We got away with it for a long time and I wish it wasn't this way, but that's the rules. Like we can't uh, legally, you can't on TV if you don't have the rights to a song, sing that song. Like Conan had a whole thing about like guessing um, shitty parodies of like popular songs on a show because they like they were cable, so they couldn't afford it. Yeah, and it's like you're not allowed to use music that you haven't paid for, and now we're getting claimed for it. A lot of there, there's a ton of bullshit claims everywhere. It's really annoying, but also. Like some people are like, this is fucking ridiculous. And it's like it's copyright law. Yeah, I don't like, know what you I, want YouTube I used to do. Only ten seconds of this song, same pitch, not with any audio. And it's just like, damn, that does suck. But that's not yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that one makes sense. Like there are other examples. Like even just pulling from my own channel. Like last week, I got claimed on the air for a song that wasn't even in the fucking video. Yeah. Um, and then also, it's like some of mine that have got gotten fully claimed have been like my joke where I have a, a, a t- video called. Mr. Brightside piano tutorial intermediate level and it's just me going beam 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 it's the same note and I'm mashing it to the tune and stuff yeah. like that's fucking stupid claim. yeah there's stupid shit and crazy copyright claims everywhere but if you're getting claimed for using a song in your video or like covering the song or humming it that's like the law it like may, literally yeah. heard back from lawyers there's no argument there I just see people some YouTubers bitching like Oh, really? We can't even sing the song now? And it's like, you never really should have been able to. Yeah. It sucks, and it's kind of because of Disney for all that shit. Yeah. But, like, if we there's nothing you can do about it. Like, they, they bitch to YouTube specifically. Like, YouTube, come on. It's like, they're getting cracked down on by copyright law, and that's no fucking joke in the U.S., yeah. you know? I don't know. But on a more positive note... Hell yeah! Dude, okay. I definitely... Because uh, we are late-stage podcast at this point, um, but... Well, I probably want to like even just throw up a Twitter poll. I do think that people are going to be cool with it. But we were, we were talking this week. We really miss shooting. We've been discussing. We've been boys. discussing. We miss shooting the Gus and Eddie go to wherever videos. And the current thought here is that um, maybe every once in a while on the on the channel, when we got a fun idea, a fun place to go to, we would like go out. Me, Eddie, Jamie behind the camera as a good good boy too. Yeah. Just go someplace fun, shoot a Gus and Eddie video, and just put like it up on the to. channel. Yeah. Just With like we used to. Guest YouTuber stuff, just like fully making the memes like we did before. Because again, we love making those videos so much. Mm-hmm. There's not a place to post it unless it works on this channel. Yeah, but like we can't put it on our own because it just doesn't work with what we post anymore. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't work out. But I I think that it would really have the potential to go over very well here. Yep. So if you guys are interested in us, just every once in a while, we got nothing really locked down in terms of a schedule. We do have an idea for a fun place to go in the next month, maybe if you guys are down for it. If you're interested, let us know in the comments and let us know on Twitter and stuff. Yes. And Please we'll definitely yes. we should <laughs> we'll, we'll mention it next podcast earlier just in case some people missed it and we're also going to tweet about it. So if you're hearing about it again, you're like, "Come on." Uh, oh yeah, they probably saw the tweet by now. Oh yeah. Either way, hey, we're we're doing? thinking about <laughs> we're thinking about you guys. That's what's most important. We're doing this for you. Yeah. Not for us or cuz it's creatively fulfilling or fun to shoot or there's money involved, but we're doing this for you. I was just making sure they thought that we were like we were doing everything for them and not for us at all. I've done everything for you. You've done nothing for me. <laughs> <laughs> you telling the audience that? Yeah. Absolutely nothing. Well, because it's the well, that's the Rick Springfield song, and I we just talked about copyright claiming, and I was going to sing it, but oh yeah, you, you can't, can't do, do that. that. I wonder if I whispered. I've done everything for you. You claim, dude. You done. I think that's fine. It sounds like you're just saying it. Tony, pitch my vocals down 10 octaves. Tony, if you want to just use that audio to just kind of produce the whole song, that'd be great. Be fine. 
We got a question here at Humza Khan. What was some of your worst and best moments in a GameStop or other retail video game store? Um. Oh, I think didn't I tell that story of me being a kid in a GameStop? I don't uh, know. This very, uh, I was buying Little Big Planet three. I'll say it really quick because I think I told it before. Um, I was playing or buying Little Big Planet three, and I was like, I think twelve, maybe thirteen. And this giant dude, he was maybe like six four. Where there was a super long line, and he cut me in line, and I was just like, okay, like, say something, come on. And I was just like, uh, excuse me, like I was in line. And I think you cut me. Um, and he's just like looked at me, and he's just like, you're barking up the wrong tree, kid. Ooh. And I was just like, no, but I was in line. And he's just like, you're not going to cut in front of me. And I was just like, uh, and then the GameStop employee, um, I thought was like ringing him up to get him away faster. But then when I looked at the GameStop employee, like, whoa, what is that all about? Cause he's like threatening a kid. Mm -hmm. Uh, the GameStop employee just kind of looked like he wanted me to leave too. And I was uh. like, dude, kid just got threatened in front of you. You want to be nice? I love that. It, what was he an eighties movie bully? You're barking up the wrong tree, kid. I know. <laughs> it's like, why would you say that to like a, a little kid? Like, I mean, I'm 13 maybe. And it's like, you're six, four. What are you going to do with their point Dexter? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking dweeb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a pretty shitty experience at GameStop a couple of months ago when I traded in my PS4. Um, usually, whenever, almost every time I've been in a GameStop, I know that corporate-wise, they're just a shitty company, and they yeah. really make their salespeople ram upgrades and deals down people's throats. I feel bad for the employees there because almost overwhelmingly, every single GameStop employee I've encountered has been really nice and yeah. cool. And I feel bad that they have to have their agenda of like, you know, can I interest you in uh, upgrading? You'd actually save this much. Yeah. Um, and I've actually let them talk me into that shit, fully aware of the fact that like, yeah, you're talking me into it, but yep, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is this the cord story? Because I do think this was on the podcast yeah, before. Yeah, I'll, I'll just speed through it. Guys, just limp through it with me. <laughs> There's just some dumb punk kid that was sassing me. I was just like, hey, do I need to bring in like an HDMI for this? And he's like, uh, yeah. Well, do you guys have some? Yeah. Okay, well... Can I buy one? Uh, we don't have them. It's just like, fuck you, dude. Yeah, dude. A any of that attitude is like, just don't be mean to people, even if you're having a bad day. It's like it makes your life way easier if you're not mean to people who are strangers. Yeah. Hey, you want to fight me? No. 